Welcome everybody on our next webinar, Open Virtualization Pro. Let's just wrap up, wait uh, 30 seconds, maximum one minute. Uh, just let us know that you hear as well, you see as well. With me, um, we have a uh, Simon Cotter. Simon, hello, my friend. Hi, Pavel. Hi, how's it going? I'm, I'm good, thank you. A I tried, I, you know, we don't have a, such a beautiful uh, weather today. Yesterday was brilliant. Right now, in I breakfast uh, in Bielsko Biała, so all, all the best for my story team here. And how, how about you? Yeah, it's great. Here we are starting to see the fall right here in the north of Italy. So it's going to be colder than than at least one month ago now mm -hmm. so winter is coming in some way <laughs> yeah that said i think is good thank you like in lord lord, lord of <laughs> you know uh, winter is coming not not lord of rings or where it was uh Baitos. oh game of thrones, oh, game of thrones. <laughs> and remember when we had last time the webinar i said about that i keep the fingers crossed for the italy in the championships in europe yeah, you see right. what? that was that was a real finger crossed <laughs> congrats yeah yeah, okay. yeah. Well, so what great, was a great so, league next time you have to do the same thing for the world cup right next year yeah yeah I will, I, will, I will do for sure poland will not be at the same at this position not in this decade believe me <laughs> okay guys so we what we have right now here is reducing manual processes in devops with oracle linux automation manager engine and simon cotter is not the first time with us so i'm really thrilled and happy that uh he will um, share his knowledge uh because simon is right now holding all of the Oracle Linux and virtualization um, program as a product management uh, part, as a director here. So we will looking for some insights from the, uh, from the Simon. And also Simon will, let's a little bit deep dive, we'll start with the uh, introduction, what the Oracle Linux automation manager is and how we can use it in a daily, daily basis in our processes. So we'll start with the presentation, then we will go uh, to the live demo as always. If you will have any questions uh, during the presentation, just, uh, ju just let us know. We just put on the, uh, uh, on the chat the information uh, that you can also subscribe to us on a different social media channel. So do not hesitate uh, to do it. Uh, so Simon, uh, please take, uh, please go on, go on stage uh, and let, let's start um, the webinar. Yeah, great. Thank you, Pavel. Yeah, and, and obviously, thanks to the Open Virtualization Pro, the community, uh, to that uh, time to time gives us the the, uh, the opportunity to talk with you and share what we are doing at Oracle. And yeah, as Pavel was saying, uh, I'm going today to, to share with you uh, one of the latest announcements we have done around the Oracle Linux ecosystem, uh, and it's about the, the Oracle Linux Automation Manager and the engine. So, yeah, to introduce the, the topic here, uh, at, the, at the end, uh, everyone knows that uh, manual processes, at the end, does not allow DevOps uh, velocity, right? Or does not allow to, to get the DevOps uh, implemented. And <clears throat> manual processes obviously are something tedious and time consuming, right? And it's also something that is difficult to operate at scale, right? Iger is the number of systems that you're going to manage, and uh, Iger is going to be the difficulty to, to manage all of them. When, when we say something manual, it's also a wrong problem, right? Um, it's human um, while executing uh, the same kind of operation on hundreds of times or thousands of times. It could easily happen that maybe sometime you, you really fail. Um, it's human. Uh, and with this kind of approach, there's no real standardization, right? Um, and at the same time, it's something very difficult to maintain, right? Because if you think to possibly maintaining a huge list of systems uh, with a manual approach, manual processes, manual scripts, uh, it's, yeah, it, it becomes easily a mess, right? Or very difficult to, to, to manage. 
um, <clears throat> yeah, and, and obviously the result could always be a possible drift within your systems, right? Because while applying changes with, with manual scripts, uh, it could happen that maybe the script had been edited time to time, and so maybe the result is not always the same on all of my systems. And this kind of thing means that you can you could introduce a configuration drift, or you could have systems that do not respect the standard or the company standard that had been defined. And uh, by a study uh, conducted by IDC in September 2021, uh, we, we can also see that 61% of manual processes uh, is number one bottleneck, right? Uh, <clears throat> and, and at the end, this kind of, of approach to the requirement of maintaining or many, uh, many systems also introduce an increased risk exposure, right? Because you do not really have the control of your system. You do not really know what is the status of your systems. And so you could uh, you could easily have some system where maybe some security fix hasn't been installed, or maybe the configuration in place or on particular processes is not the perfect one or is not the good one. So um, and based on the requirements, what usually happens is that many administrator many administrators uh, use use uh, one of custom scripts or scripts able to manage uh, this kind of requirement. What are the limitations of, of this kind of approach? Uh, yeah, first of all, it's something that do not scale, right? A, a manual script that executes remote operation is something that cannot scale, uh, also because you do not really have an environment where to control the execution, check the logs, check the execution that have been done in the past, for example. So you really have a lack of control. Um, <clears throat> there's also potential security risks, right? Because uh, you do not really know what have been, have been done in the past, and so you don't really know the actual status of your environment. Uh, there's no standardization. Uh, it's also, as already said, uh, between the lines, it's hard to audit, right? I cannot get access to, to what they've done in the past. <clears throat> and so you, you, at the end, the final result will be uh, that you won't have a standardization for your system. You will have many different systems or many different configurations on your systems. So a configuration drift that uh, at the end will take you um, to, to lose the control of, of, of your systems. <clears throat> so based on, on those requirements, based on the possible manual approach, which are the, the benefits of automating the infrastructure management? Uh, so first of all, the fact that uh, you can increase the, the scalability and the productivity, right? I do not need to get one person or more people manually executing and running those scripts on all the environments to get the configuration in place or to get my systems updated or to get my system um, with, with the standard configuration in place. For sure, it's something that will use the human error, right? I'm going to give access to give, um, with Oracle Linux Automation Manager, I'm going to give um, a tool that allows you to decide who, what, does, what, and where, right? So it's something also that improves the security <clears throat> and at the end provides consistency, right? Because while executing, uh, for example, a job by Oracle Linux Automation Manager, I'll be sure that all of my system will have the same configuration in place. I will have access to the history of jobs that have been executed. And so uh, I will have the opportunity to look what have been done in the past, I will have the opportunity to immediate, immediately check possible configuration drift. And I will also have the opportunity to re-execute the job and get the same doing the steps where required, right? And I'm going to show you an example later, later today. The entire thing, the entire automation, for sure, it's something that is going to reduce the cost in terms of maintenance and management for your systems. And so this is the, the main target uh, related to Oracle Linux Automation Manager and Benji, right? Reducing cost while maybe saving time to different people that could maybe dedicate their time on more interesting operations or more interesting topics within the company. You see, you see the trend that many of the administrators, for example, or the IT, IT departments saying, Okay, let's let's keep it as it was. Uh, we don't want to change it. 
because it gave them the kind of the opportunity because we control it as it was and we don't want to automate. I think it's many times when I speak with the IT departments, they from one side, they would like to automate, but from the other, you know, will everything will be audited, uh, etc. So they are a little bit scared about this kind of this capabilities that the automation gives. Uh, gives. What what is your observation from the market today? Uh, yeah. So first of all, the the uh, related to that, I agree with you because we we had the same feedback while discussing with customers about the the Oracle Linux Automation Manager. Uh, the the other the other interesting point is that <clears throat> uh, more than one time, another another important point is the fact that usually those those scripts or this manual approach is managed uh, by one administrator, two administrators, or some of the administrators, or one administrator manages those scripts and the other administrator manages the other scripts. Uh, <clears throat> and the problem is that if someone or one of those guys or those people are going to leave the company, right, the same kind of automation will be out of control, right, because there's no other maybe person or there's no other employee that um, is able to to get the control of those scripts or is able to manage those scripts right just because those had been created by another person and maybe there's really lack of knowledge related to to those scripts or even the programming language that had been used on those scripts right so there's no standard um, i can be a system administrator working for a company and my preferred language is python uh, I wrote all the scripts in Python, and um, yeah, I'm going to leave the company next week. And all my colleagues do not really know uh, or never work it on Python, and and yeah, they are on their own, right? Yeah, yeah I think the, the 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 key question is that when you will start to asking about some knowledge, and the people saying, okay, this is the only guy or the lady who knows who knows it. This is the major, you know. Um, uh, concern because you know the rotation of the people or the problem with the knowledge sharing without the proper documentation and putting all of the knowledge into the one place it, right. it's a huge concern we need to cope with so definitely looking for the solutions to automate these processes and to put all of the data into the one place is definitely something that most of the companies should should look for okay let's move on yeah, and another, another topic that you reminded me is also related to security and privacy policies, right? Where, yeah, are so important here in EMEA, but are important worldwide. And uh, and with the manual approach at the end, you, you get system administrator really accessing all the systems without any kind of control while executing those scripts, right? Uh, with with, with um, a tool like Oracle Linux Automation Manager, you can really control and decide who does what and where. And at the same time, you are not going to share the real access or the direct access to those systems, right? So it's something that you can really control uh, while while executing uh, those those operations. Let's let's call them operation because you can do whatever you want at the end. Um, yeah, and so um, at Oracle we we started, and <clears throat> obviously it's not something new, or this is something that started uh, years ago, right? Uh, Ansible is today also part of our Oracle cloud infrastructure. So we look at two main open source projects. One of them is Ansible. Uh, Ansible at, at the end uh, gives you the, the complete automation framework and also some orchestration capabilities to, to possibly address this kind of requirement that we just, just um, discussed. The interesting point is that this the Ansible solution is uh, agentless push architecture. So you are not really required <clears throat> to install any agent on, on the machines that you're going to manage or the machines where you are going to execute jobs or operations. And, and <clears throat> Ansible uses playbooks. Playbooks at the end are a sort of code repository, let's call them code repository. A playbook contains more operations that can be executed on, on an environment or is on a system. Another, <clears throat> another open source project where, where we look at while, while working on Oracle Linux Automation uh, Manager is AWX. 
Uh, AWX is a web-based user interface, uh, able to also expose REST API, and also it has also a task engine, right? So what is AWX? AWS gives you a web-based user interface on top of Ansible. Uh, the interesting point of AWX is that <clears throat> it gives you a, a centralized management interface that at the same time is also road-based access control, right? So it means, again, you can decide who does what and where and gives you also API access, right? So you, you also have API to, to possibly automate any kind of operation. And thanks to AWX, you can really automate uh, different tasks, like, for example, the job scheduling, or your inventory management, even reporting, and the entire workflow automation. Uh, over there, you, you can also share the credential, credential that are required to access those managed systems, and also different tools there. Um, so both together are the, the, the open source um, projects where we, we work it and we are to also today collaborating and where we um, build Oracle Linux Automation Manager and Oracle Linux Automation Engine. <clears throat> yeah, <clears throat> so uh, Oracle Linux Automation Manager and Engine had, had been announced on <clears throat> August 18, so this summer. Um, and again, as already said, Oracle Linux Automation Manager is based on, on AWX, so it's the web-based uh, user interface, and the Oracle Linux Automation Manager is based on Ansible open source project. The interesting point is that <clears throat> Uh, the entire solution is included with the Oracle Linux Premier support. So there's no extra cost to get access to the Oracle Linux Automation Manager and Engine. An important thing that I would like to remind, um, the support for Oracle Linux Automation Manager is included with Oracle Linux Premier support. But with Oracle Linux, you are not forced to buy the support subscription. So Oracle Linux, uh, it's important to remind that Oracle Linux can be downloaded, can be used, can be installed, can be updated for free, right? So you are not forced to pay any support subscription. And the same kind of thing is valid for Oracle Linux Automation Manager. So you can decide to get, to download uh, latest and greatest Oracle Linux 8, install and use Oracle Linux Automation Manager, get also the update for the same without paying any kind of support subscription. The support subscription is optional and obviously strongly suggested for production environments. But again, it's optional. So two components to remind AWX uh, as a major UI interface and Ansible as an orchestration engine, yes? So with the agentless automation option for free and the support is the optional. Yep, right. It's the same. So this is the same concept that we always had with, with Oracle Linux. Download, updates are there for free. Uh, the support subscription is optional. Mm -hmm. uh, so while, while looking at the, the benefits, while leveraging a solution like um, Oracle Linux Automation Manager and Engine, uh, yeah, first of all, uh, an ag agile IT operation, right? Uh, you can create and reuse playbooks to automate tasks, right? Uh, the interesting point is that when a playbook has been created, the same can be reused, customized, uh, or maybe you can get a piece or a portion of one playbook and a portion of another one and create a new playbook. You can download the existing playbooks built by the community and leverage the same or customize the same for your own environment. Um, so the interesting point here is that um, you are not really required to start from scratch, right? But inter the other interesting point is that you are not really required to be a developer, right? Because the, the entire playbook or the entire automation is based on a simple human readable automation, so on the YAM format, right? It's really a readable code, um, does not require any kind of development experience or you are not required to know the, the Python syntax or any other type of syntax. It's very easy to, to get implemented and starting from an existing playbook, you can really easily build your own uh, or customize the existing one based on your requirement. <clears throat> the 
the other the other benefit is really related to the standardization right you can easily control the configuration drift because one thing that we didn't say is that with Oracle Linux Automation Manager and Engine, you, you can, for example, update the system, uh, apply a configuration change uh, for, for an application, but you, you can also check. So that's a, a job type that is checks. And this kind of job type allows you to, for example, verify that a particular configuration is in place or not on a system. And so, this is also why the, the control of configuration drift is very easy with, with Oracle Linux Automation Manager and Engine. Uh, the, other, the other important point is that all the outcome and also the tasks that have been executed can be uh, reviewed, so those are auditable, can be versionable, repeatable, and recoverable, right? So I execute a job, I can decide to repeat the same, I can decide to recover the same just because maybe failed at one point, uh, I can audit write all the jobs and check what had been executed. Um, the other interesting point is that uh, in a big company, I also have the opportunity to capture and incorporate all the best practices coming from maybe more experts working at the same company, right? Um, the same thing maybe cannot happen if those people are leveraging different tools or maybe are again, working on a manual approach or manual scripts, right? They do not talk each other or they do not share each other their own scripts. Uh, by having one unique interface like Oracle Linux Automation Manager, all of those can share their knowledge, can share their, their in this case, their playbooks, right? And those can be uh, leveraged by others in, in the company. Um, third, or last but not least, um, you can easily increase the security and compliance, right? Because again, with the control and configuration drift, I can easily check if, for example, my system is secure or my system already has the latest and greatest packages installed. Um, and I have an increased security because again, I can define the roles uh, to control what users are allowed to modify or change my systems, mostly the production systems, right? So um, I can decide, really decide who can control the systems or can execute operations or jobs on the systems. And I can easily and quickly remediate to possible deviation or, or, or possible configuration drift, right? Based on the standard that the company defined. Uh, so moving, moving ahead, um, maybe we can deep dive a bit on the, the Oracle Linux Automation Manager, the, the key capabilities we have there. Uh, so first of all, we have, as already said, we have the opportunity to configure user groups and permissions, right? So it's a role-based access control solution. And so I have the opportunity to, to define uh, the users, the groups, and for each of them define the permissions on the systems that are going to be managed by, by Oracle Linux Automation Manager. I have the opportunity to uh, define the configuration of job templates, right? Uh, job templates are the definition and parameters for the execution of one playbook. So let me give you an example. One playbook uh, could be code able to configure uh, say Linux uh, on, on Linux systems, right? A job te template could be one job template for that playbook could be to define say Linux as restrict restrictive. Another job template could be to define say Linux as permissive, right? So more job templates on the same playbook. So the playbook changes the configuration of Linux. I can have more templates, one template that define, for example, our configure Linux restricted, restrictive, and one job template that define the Linux as permissive. I have the inventory management. So inventories are at the end logical group of hosts, right? Uh, obviously, um, if you think to possibly have 100, if not 1,000 of systems managed by Oracle Linux Automation Manager, you can think to select 5,000 systems while executing a job. And so you have the opportunity to define logical groups. And those logical groups uh, could be, for example, based on the, on, the, on, the Oracle, on the Oracle Linux release you have, or could be based on production, test, and quality systems. So those are really logical groups. Um, I have project repositories. Uh, project repository at the end are a uh, logical store where you can save your, your playbooks, right? 
uh, and those could be local file systems or could be even um, repository coming coming from JIT. And at the end, last but not least, again, <clears throat> credential management, right? So the, the I have the management for the SSH keys, for example, or even Git access tokens, okay, while connecting to, to the systems or to the managed nodes um, by, by Oracle Linux Automation Manager. So the entire credential management is there on, 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 on the same Oracle Linux Automation Manager. I, I'm not required to manage all the credentials externally. Um, SSH keys as well as Git access tokens can be managed by, by the same web interface. Um, yeah, here we have a, an example scenario. Um, let's say that um, I have a user uh, that created a playbook, and this playbook is, is there to, to configure Selenus configuration for production systems. Uh, by Oracle Linux Automation Manager, I can send um, or I can decide to configure my 100 development servers and to send the configuration commands uh on, on on all of those environments the interesting point here is that i can have one playbook that is the one able to configure selenux right and thanks to the job templates i have the opportunity to define selenux in uh, restrictive for example for production environment permissive for test environment maybe disabled for development environment just to give you an example so one playbook three different job templates and automate based um, on the logical groups. So I can have three different logical groups, the production one, the uh, test one, and the development one. On the production one, the job template restrictive. On the test one, the job template permissive. On the development one, the job template um, disabled. So one playbook, three different job templates, and I applied uh, the required configuration on all of my systems. Uh, this one is really a very, <clears throat> very easy example for, for a Linux operating system, but this kind of thing can be done also on firewall, network, storage, computer, and software, right? So there's no real limitation. Uh, the Maybe the only real requirement is a possible SSH access to, to the device that you the, that you want to manage with, with our Linux Automation Manager. Now, Simon, question, what experience should I have as a typical specialist or an Oracle Linux administrator to cope with the Automation Manager? Uh, so the installation is really easy. One one thing that this, we decided to do uh, for this initial release of Oracle, Oracle Linux Automation Manager and Engine is to really share, um, so a very easy installation. Uh, at the end, you're really required to just install a couple of RPMs on your Oracle Linux 8 system, and that's all. Your Oracle Linux Automation Manager is there, up and running. Um, that said, you're, you're, you're not really required to have a, an extra knowledge uh, on, on, <clears throat> on Ansible or on playbooks or YAM. Uh, really, I'm, I, for example, I wasn't an expert, and maybe I, even today I'm not an expert on YAM language. But if you look at it, uh, you can easily understand which one is the syntax, and you can easily understand and start immediately start to build your own playbooks. Um, that said, if you are a Linux system administrator, uh, once you, you, you got how the, the playbooks work, uh, at that point you can really automate all the possible things that you want to do. So everything that can be done by a manual approach can also be automated with Oracle Linux Automation mm -hmm. Manager. There's, no, there's really no difference. Thank you. Let's move forward because we are after 30 minutes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, um, Oracle Linux Automation Manager and Engine, I'll be quite fast. Uh, it's, uh, again, very simple and really a cost-effective solution, right? So first of all, it's stable and reliable. Um, I know that maybe someone could say, yeah, I can leverage it for free, but I can also leverage Ansible in a and AWX for free. That's true. We all agree on that. Um, maybe the main difference is that while leveraging Oracle Linux Automation Manager and Engine, you're going to leverage a release that can be dive, really tested by, by Oracle. Uh, deep dive testing had been done before releasing. Um, and at the same time, 
if you have a support subscription, let's say there's an issue on, on, the, on, the, on the solution, there's an issue on your automation, uh, at Oracle, we are able to possibly backport the fix, right, into the same release. So we are not really required to upgrade, for example. Uh, while looking at open source community, and this is something expected, obviously, uh, maybe you have to move forward to the next release of the open source solution. And maybe the next release of the open source solution fixes that kind of problem that you were encountering, but maybe another one is going to, to come up, right? Due to the fact that there's new feature and the new feature introduces another issue. Here, the, maybe the, the real value um, is related to the fact that if there's an issue on, on the release, um, we are able to possibly backward the fix. If the fix is already there from the community, obviously, if it's not, we are able to get it fixed on our own and possibly push the same fix to the community. Uh, and so something that is really a, a bit more stable and reliable for the production environment. And, and moving ahead, again, it's part of the Oracle Linux Prima support, so there's no real extra cost. <clears throat> um, again, zero learning curve and easy to switch if you already leverage AWX or Runcible or even uh, um, Red Hat Tower uh, at the end. Uh, it's the same solution. There's no real difference be over there. <clears throat> uh, you can, and while moving from other solutions based on Ansible, you can even you can even leverage existing modules, repositories, as well as playbooks, right? Um, and and uh, yeah, that said, obviously we already talked about the all the possible benefits of of this solution. Uh, moving ahead, a uh, quick mention uh, related to Oracle Linux Premier support. I would like to also mention that Oracle Premier, Linux Premier support does not include just the operating system. With Oracle Linux Premier support, you have operating system availability with Oracle Clusterware or other Clusterware so cluster solution like CodeOpsync and Pacemaker. You have Bitrace, case splice like patching, so zero downtime patching for your Linux system. You have Oracle Linux Manager. Uh, you have Oracle Linux Virtualization Manager, so you also have the virtualization included with your Oracle Linux Linux support, and you also have Oracle Cloud Native Environments that include Kubernetes, Kata Containers, and the support around, around container solutions. Um, yeah, before moving to the demo, I would like to leave. I think that we, we are going, Pavel, to, to share those slides, right? Yeah, sure, but I just want to ask where to start, but I can see that watch training videos. So I believe that, uh, you know, this is a great opportunity to, to play with the technology and to learn from the scratch here. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Yep, yep. So the, the training is there, are there for free. You, uh, those are training videos. Uh, our people recorded at Oracle and those trainings are there for free. Uh, as well as, as already said, the code is there for free. If you go on, on yam.oracle.com, you can download the, the Oracle Linux ISOs, you can download the software, whatever you want. And if you want to keep posted or keep yourself updated on possible news, releases, and so on, um, there's also the, the, the Oracle Linux blog mentioned there. <clears throat> um, that said, I, I would like to quickly show you um, how Oracle Linux Automation Manager present and let me try to share my screen okay so i'll stop with the presentation can you see my screen Pavel? yep everything everything looks good okay great okay so this one is the the uh, article linux automation manager dashboard as you can see uh, on the dashboard you immediately have a job status chart that shows you the job is executed, the failed and the successful one. And this one is really a great thing because you can immediately check and see if one job failed or one of the scheduled job failed. Um, yeah, that said, um, let's see, uh, for example, uh, let's start from templates. <clears throat> so those are job templates at the end, the possible answer to an existing playbook. Right. So, for example, this one is disable Cell Linux for OL7 and OL8. This one enable enforcing Cell Linux for OL7, OL8. If I click on the same, you, you will see that there's a playbook associated named enable Cell Linux. Right. Going back from this button, okay, I can decide to start a job using this template. Here, I have three different 
um, <clears throat> logical groups. Let's call them logical groups. Um, OS6, OS7, OL8, I'm going to execute this kind of operation. So to enable enforcing for Linux on the OL8 group, right? And I can launch the execution. Immediately after, I can see the output, right? So this kind of, of uh, operation has been executed on three different hosts, right? 18, 17, and 15. As you can see, the C Linux has been applied, right? Has been applied on this server, sorry. On 18 had been applied, and on 17 and 15, maybe the same kind of thing was already in place. And then I also have a warning saying reboot is required to set setting state to enforcing. Right now, <clears throat> I also want to share you another example that is this one. This one is going to install HTTP and also configure firewall D for my HTTP server. Let's try to execute it on, on OL7 logical group. As you can see, there's an, a, a task named um, install Apache package, right? This one is okay. That means that the Apache package was already there on the server. So the interesting point here is that while executing, for example, yum install httpd, right? If the httpd uh, package is already there, I'm going to get an okay, right? The result is what I expect, right? To get the http installed. Ensure that HTTP is running. It was already running on both of those servers, right? Ensure that port 80 was open and it was already open on both servers. Restart the firewall D service to load in the firewall changes. This one is an operation that had been, had been executed on my systems, right? So on a total of six operations, six operations for each system, Five of them were, were already there or were already in place, right? One of them had been, had been executed and the one executed was to restart the firewall D process. And, and obviously if on one of the two servers, uh, HTTP or the Apache package wasn't there, the same was going to be installed. And at that point I could see here, it changed it maybe equal to two or even three, because at that point, HTTPD is also to be started. And if I look at projects, right, there are more projects on, on this example, there's um, one local repository project. There are two other local projects named Simon C, Simon H, and the interesting point is that there's also um, a project that relies on Git, right? As we already said, you can have your playbooks available locally on the local file system, as well as available on Git uh, repository. That said, uh, as, as we already said, here you have the management of users, you can define teams, right? you can define the schedule. So jobs obviously can be also scheduled. You're not required to connect to the web interface and manually execute the jobs. The jobs can also be scheduled. There's a proper job scheduler, scheduler available here. And again, we also have the dashboard that keep track on all the job, jobs executed and, and also their outcome if uh, successful or failed. Looks no complicated, to be honest. Not really, not really. Yeah, and, you know, you just showed for the two servers, but imagine that we have a dozens of them. So the question is why, why people do not use the automation yet? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. The, 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 and the interesting point is that, as we already said, uh, you're not really required to install any, any agent, right? Because if you have, for example, 5,000, 10,000 systems, and the requirement for an automation is to install 10,000 agents. Maybe at that point, yeah, 
it's it's a huge uh, or it's a big project to to get this kind of agent deployed on all of your uh, nodes, right? While this solution does not really require any agent installed, SSH access is the only one. And I'm come back to this, you know, security part. So we know the concept zero trust security when everything should be auditable and we should keep um, a huge amount of time to have a keep the processes internally and externally. As I'm not saying do not trust each other, but ha have a place where we can automate, document and have the audit possibility to audit log full of the chains of the changes in the organization. Uh, and yeah. I believe the automation manager, it can be a, a great opportunity to, to not only simplify uh, the security and parts uh, to, to go with it uh, and to help Can you hear me now? Yeah, what about now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah, yeah. I lost you for some, lost you for some no worries. There are some issues with my internet connection today. Uh, like I said, I'm, I moved to the south of Poland. I don't know why, maybe. Maybe when I start the security part, uh, so somebody just get rid, got, got me rid of. Uh, so, Simon, let's, uh, let's move on. Um, uh, and stay connected. So tell me a little bit about uh, the, the links that you're showing here. Uh, yeah, so those are all the socials. Um, so Twitter and Facebook. Um, the, the blog is the Oracle Linux blog. And uh, yeah, over there you can even uh, su subscribe yourself by newsfeed. And yeah, you can, if you want, if you're interested, keep yourself updated on, 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 on Oracle Linux. And again, when, when we say Oracle Linux is not, it's not just the operating system, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Oracle Linux is today really um, an, an operating environment because uh, we include many, many different tools, many different solutions with, with Oracle Linux. And, <clears throat> and over, all of them are usually announced uh, and, and uh, announced there on, on, our, on our Oracle Linux blog. And, and over there, you can even find interesting technical articles or technical examples. We have uh, our kernel developers at Oracle that usually write uh, very interesting blog, blog entries there. We have different developers, really, uh, writing there. And so if you are interested on in diving into different technologies related to the Linux kernel, as well as many other topics, yeah, over there you can find uh, very interesting uh, mm -hmm. uh, articles. Marcus is asking, is Oracle Linux Automation Manager available for the installation? I guess, of course, yes. You said it's free of charge. We can easily download. So so just Google it and download from, I think it's in repository in our Oracle Linux, yes? Yeah, you said for the few uh, RPMs. So uh, I so think it's, uh, it's not sophisticated to find it. Or on, on the yam.oracle.com website at the top, you have a download button. Over there, you can find the ISO. If you are interested mm -hmm. to start to, to, to install from an ISO, you can even find uh, uh, different images. Uh, you can find images for KVM, images for uh, Vagrant and VirtualBox. Um, and starting from there, once you have an Oracle Linux 8 system up and running, uh, yeah, by yam, or by mm -hmm. following the, the Oracle Linux Automation Manager documentation, YAM install uh, uh, OLAM or Oracle Linux Automation Manager, that's all. And two more questions. Uh, mm -hmm. Do I can manage other Linux distributions? Uh, is it compatible with CentOS RHEL 7? Uh, Simon. <clears throat> so um, today, today uh, obviously, we, we only support Oracle Linux, right? Uh, that said, uh, there's no real difference, uh, and Oracle Linux, as we always said, is 100% uh, binary compatible with CentOS as well as with the Enterprise Linux. 
Um, that said, we just released on August 18. We tried to keep it simple as the first release, mostly for our customers going to approach the solution. Now, we, it's our intention to improve uh, the, the, the options available for Oracle Linux Automation Manager, as well as the supported options. And between them, obviously, it's our interest or our uh, our interest to introduce the support for other Linux distribution as managed nodes, right? Okay. <clears throat> from okay, the pure tech, I from think, the pure think tech, I was just saying, from the pure technical point of view, there's no real limitation, right? When you have a SSH access, uh, it works, it just works, right? So we have exactly six minutes after we started. So I would like to um, thank you, Simon, again to the be enjoying the Open Virtualization Pro webinars. Like always, it was a pleasure to hear lots of good insight from your side, uh, also from the from the Oracle team. Uh, I just disappeared, but the voice is still with us. No worries, and and hope that we will get you soon on the next next topics. Definitely, we'll let you know. Uh, like we said on the chat, everything was recorded, so we'll also provide the presentation. So if you will have more questions, do not hesitate to contact us directly on our social media channels, on our website. Keep in remember that you can go and newsletter, uh, be part of the newsletter, so you will get all of the news feeds uh, that we're sharing uh, with you uh, a few times uh, during the month. Uh, and what I what what I can. Uh, what I say, like, like I said, keep the fingers crossed for the Italy in the next championship. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I still remember because, you know, the finals uh, was, was a brilliant game. So uh, I'm happy that one of my, one of my good friends, you know, uh, could really celebrate this, this, this finals, not as we had, um, uh, you know, uh, problems with, with our, but let's right now focus on the technology. So. Thank you all for, for being uh, and attending our webinar. Uh, keep, keep remember that you can always go on openvirtualization.pro, join us, and see you on the others' uh, activities. Sinan, any, anything else from your side, my friend? No, yeah, I would like to thank you again, Pavel, for, for the opportunity. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you, as well as the entire Open Virtualization Pro community for the opportunity you gave me today to share what well, we have just done with our Linux Automation Manager. And that said, I really hope to talk with you uh, another time before the, the next World Cup, right? <laughs> no, definitely, you have my word. So team, Simon, again, all, all of the attendees, thank you for your time. Have a great day, stay safe, and stay in touch. Yep, thank you all. Cheers, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.